venerable religious and dear parishioners, as we all know, today is Father's Day, and so I would like to offer reflections upon this special theme. And yes, fatherhood certainly needs to be, to have that at least one day every year set aside to honor this institution of God. And we will see, as, and we already know, how critical fathers are for their families, for the raising of children. It's very far-reaching consequences. Also, and I've mentioned this repeatedly, but it bears repeating, I'm happy to say that insofar as the National Day of Fathershood is concerned, the birthplace of Father's Day was right here in Spokane, Washington. It was on the third Sunday of June 1910 that a city-wide observance was made of honoring fathers. Mother's Day already existed as a national observance, but not Father's Day. And thanks to Mrs. Sonora Smart Dodd, who labored really for the rest of her life to get it to be a national observance, we, we owe gratitude for her labor in this regard. And it was shortly before she died, it was in 1973, that Father's Day became a permanent, voted upon national observance. But happy to say that Spokane was the birthplace of this national observance. How important is fatherhood? Well, let me put it to you this way. Fatherhood has existed eternally. Why? Because before anything was made, before there was a single angel, single devil, a single physical object of any kind, and we know there are millions upon millions of galaxies before anything came into existence, there was the Holy Trinity. There was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And this is the ultimate mystery in our Catholic faith, how there can be three persons and yet only one God. And we can't fathom that to, certainly not to any full extent. We can only understand it to a degree. But it is what it is. There are and have been and will always be three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They mysteriously in here in each other. And what makes them different is their relationship. And again, we'll never understand this, but we try. Theologians have given explanations. Of course, we have them from Holy Scripture. And this is what we should at least be aware of, that the Father begets the Son and the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and the Son. This doesn't make the Father greater than the Son. That was the terrible error that Arius fell into. Well, the Father begets the Son. Every Son is less than the Father. He comes after Him in the order of time and in other ways as well. So obviously... According to Arius, the Son is less than the Father. But Arius' grave mistake was to attribute human, the aspects of fa human fatherhood to the Divine Father. And here's what makes the Son equal to the Father, that at no point in time did the Father begin to generate the Son. He always did it. He always does it, and He will always do it. As a matter of fact, with God, there is no time. Time began when creation began. 
So there was never a time when the father started to generate his son. That happens only in time with all human fathers. In time, they generate, they beget their children. So eternally, the fatherhood and the sonship was there. And for that same reason, eternally, the proceeding of the Holy Ghost from the Father and the Son took place, takes place, will continue to take place eternally in that ever-present moment now that God exists. So that's what makes fatherhood so special. And when you dads, as being fathers of children, you beget them. You are mirroring in a small, very small, finite way, of course. But you are mirroring this eternal begetting that the Father does to the Son. What a marvelous thing that is. And it's not just the begetting, it's also the raising and the preserving. That is all part of the earthly fatherhood. And our Catholic faith tells us that in baptism we are adopted by this same Heavenly Father. There's only one Son by nature. But by our baptism the Heavenly Father gives us supernatural life. And in a very real way, we can say to Jesus, we have the same Father. You are the Son by nature. We are all children, sons and daughters through adoption. The dignity that you have, you can't meditate on this enough. That God loves you so much that He wants to adopt you as His, He being the Father, He wants you to be His adopted son and daughter. You became that in holy baptism. By persevering in the state of grace, you retain that state of adoption. How wonderful that is. And remember, Jesus is the natural son of Mary in his human nature, and he also shares his mother with us. Again, you can't meditate on this enough because it is life-changing. It helps you to live a better life when you realize what you each have been called to. So this is what our Catholic faith teaches us. And so fatherhood should be celebrated, should be honored, should be recognized for the importance that it has. But as we look up at the perfect fatherhood in heaven, we look down on earth and we see imperfect fatherhood. Why? Because every father is a sinner. Every father has his failures. And yes, even priests, we are called to spiritual fatherhood. We're not perfect either. But nevertheless, despite the natural deficiencies that are there, we nevertheless have to keep striving for the ideal of fatherhood, to be a better father, to overcome sin, to exercise that role of leading children, leading their families in the right ways of life. That is the awesome and scary responsibility of fathers. So much of how their children turn out depend on them. Depends on the mother, of course. We reflect on the important, tremendous importance of motherhood, but this is God's plan. Fatherhood and motherhood together raising the children, each offering their gifts, fulfilling their roles to raise the children in the, in the proper way. I was reading from an article here. It's actually a series of articles. And it 